Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, we are going to be taking a look at the OG masking tool inside of Alma Photo Raw and how we can use that to make selections. Now, before we jump into the edit and the tool, if you would like to help support this channel and continue helping it grow, consider using my coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20 at checkout. You'll save some money and I do make a small commission. I thank everyone who uses that. Now let's jump into on one. So here we are inside of on one photo raw, and this is a photo that I took a while ago, but it's really irrelevant when I took the photo. The goal here is to mask out the person and make everything around him black and white, similar to the color pop effect. So we're just going to go ahead and hit add filter under effects. I'm going to add a black and white filter on one is going to put this over the entire image. Now, what we want to do is click on the masking icon next to the black and white filter. This is going to activate our mask options. You could also come over here and click the masking brush as well, but those are, you know, just two different ways of getting to the same place. Now, the tool that we're going to be using today is the quick mask brush. Now don't get this confused with the quick mask AI brush. All right. I already did a video about the quick mask AI brush. Now we're talking about the quick mask brush. So let's go ahead and select that. This brush is an older method of making selections. I do recommend using the quick mask AI brush, but a little history behind this. When on one 2023 came out, I think that's when we got the initial super select AI. They removed the OG masking brush, which everyone had come to know as like the way to make AI selections before on one decided to put the AI uh, super select AI brush in there. Well, now that they've improved the super select AI brush, I can imagine this OG brush is going to go away because in my opinion, the masking AI brush just works so much better or the quick mask AI brush. It works so much better. So we'll see how that goes with future releases of on one. But what you have here, if you haven't used this brush before, what you have here, make sure that it says OG up here at the top left. And then the top bar is actually pretty simple, right? You're going to use two different versions or two different methods of this brush, the keep and the erase. All right. And it's really that simple. Where do I want to keep the black and white edit in my image? If I want to keep it in the background, then all I need to do is paint a green bar all the way around the background. All right. And you don't have to like cover the entire background. You can just make selections on one is going to be smart enough to figure that out. Now where you may need to zoom in on your image are gaps in between your subject that you're trying to cut out. All right. So like I want this background here to get the edit and then right in between his backpack here, I'm going to put this like so, and then in between his arm and his torso, I'm going to get that area and then I'm also going to make a smaller brush and get right in between this strap and his torso and see how on one deals with that. Now we'll move around and you can see there's a little bit of space in between the bag here. So I'll put another mark there and put another mark here and let's go ahead and hit command zero zoom out. I think we got all of the gaps that would have been present in this particular image. We'll see how well on one does, but before we can render this, we need to tell on one, well, where do I want this black and white effect to be removed from? Well, I want it to be removed from the person now with a brush relatively uh, large. What I like to do is go around the edges staying within the subject. So I'm not going over the edge of the subject. I'm staying within the subject and it does help to make multiple strokes of the mouse. So pick up and then let go. 
uh, when you're doing this because if you make a mistake then you got to do command Z or control Z to undo that and this could make your masking go that much longer um, what I'm going to do is just kind of paint over some of these areas now the other thing with this brush is you want to look at transition points so this is really dark and so is the underside or the underside the bottom of his shoe all right uh obviously i want the blur or i'm sorry not the blur the black and white tool to go over the concrete down there at the bottom but i don't want it on his shoe at the bottom not that that will make too much of a difference seeing as how this black and white image uh, it, that's a dark area and it would just turn it black anyway, like we're already seeing. So sometimes you can get away with a less desirable mask, but this used to be the fastest way of getting a mask started. So you didn't have to spend, you know, hours with the masking brush trying to paint over your subject. So that's the point or the reason why this was uh in on one to begin with now i think i did a pretty decent job now that i've marked up all of these areas i have green and red marks you'll notice that this uh little downward arrow is allowing me to click it now it was grayed out before and this is just telling you that okay you've told on one that you want to keep some spaces or some areas with the effect and then you want to remove the effect from some area so we're going to go ahead and click this and on one's going to think through for a little bit and it's going to build a mask around the selection and you're going to see a preview anything that has green on it means that the effect so the black and white effect in this case is going to go in that area of the image anywhere that is red the black and white effect is not going to go now you can see there's a big green spot on his chest here on the shirt as well as the bottom of the shirt here it's not perfect now how do you fix that well i want to erase this effect from his shirt so i'm just going to paint over this and what i found is when you're trying to correct a mask uh, or at least in this particular mode when you're trying to correct this mask, you want to paint as as much red and green into the spots to correct it. So you see how I covered that entire uh, area this time. So that that's kind of what you want to do. I'm going to zoom in here so I can get a good masking selection on this one. So we'll just cover this area up like so. And then that area is actually okay. And that backpack strap, we'll fix that in a different method. Uh, we'll get this little piece right here. Looks like we got some on his shoulder. And let's come up here. Yeah, we got some right here. So we're just going to make sure we paint in all the areas that we want to keep. And... The hair is always going to be a hard thing to mask inside of on one. Looks like we missed a piece of his watch. So we'll just paint over that. And missed quite a bit of his watch. Transition areas like of contrast are difficult for this tool. So, you know, just know that again I, I still recommend using the quick mask uh the ai quick mask brush over this tool now but there was a point when i was asking on one to bring this tool back uh when super select was not very um reliable so i understand you know but i want to show this tool anyhow for those who are interested now, I could spend time trying to clean up these shoelaces, but I'm not going to do that in this particular uh, with this tool. There's a better way, I think, to clean those up later. So 
as you can see, I have this shadow area that is in red. It was trying to keep that. I want that to get the black and white effect. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint over this area so it gets that effect. And then there's these little areas in the concrete here. But I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time trying to clean all of these up because there's, again, an easier way of correcting those issues. But a majority of our person is selected in red meaning that they're not going to get the black and white effect and so for me to re-render this mask i'm going to hit this little downward arrow and on one's going to think itself through one more time okay and now our mask is a lot better overall so i'm going to go ahead and hit this blue check mark this is going to actually render the mask into the image so let's hit the letter o and see what we get and this is the overlay that we get. It's not very pretty, especially with the edges, the transitions. I'm not a huge fan of the way that this particular mask leaves uh, alcohol residue or artifacts is probably the best way of saying it. I'm not a huge fan of what it leaves. If we zoom in, you can see it's just not very uh, precise around the edges. Now, there are ways of cleaning this up, right? So you can come over to your basic masking brush or your manual masking brush and you can just paint all of these areas away. Mm -hmm. So everywhere that needs to be black, you want to make sure a race is selected and like his umbrella should be all black on this portion here. So if I were to paint that over, then that will be good. His shoulder here, if I hit the letter O. You can see this probably needs to be painted as well so it maintains the color information i feel like that was already it's a white uh writing on his backpack so that's not going to have too much color but the point there is if it were color in that space you want to make sure that you have it all right now again i'm not going to sit here and go through this entire a uh, cleanup job because it does take a little bit of time and this is the reason why I recommend using the quick mask AI brush uh, because you don't get as bad of artifacts and that sounds terrible when I, when I say it that way you don't get as many artifacts all right uh, now all things aside when you look at the mask and I think that this is good for everyone to understand masking is not about getting it perfect all right. Masking is about getting the effect into the places that it needs to go and making the overall image look the way that you want it to. So when I look at this image as it is, I think that everything looks good except for the top portion of the image, right? Where this orange cone is still kind of showing through. And then in his hair, we also have some orange. So let's zoom in so we can see that a little bit better. And all you have to do is, again, with your masking brush selected, you can just erase those areas. And I am, I'm sorry, you want to paint in, not erase. All right. You want to paint the effect in. And I'm just going to go over. I have a brush with 100% flow and 100% opacity, 100% feather. And I'm just painting these areas in, getting rid of this orange uh, glow around the subject here. And this doesn't take much time. You know, think of the AI masking tools as the heavy lifters. And then you're just coming in and doing some cleanup work in the areas that the effect just doesn't look quite the way you wanted it to for what it's worth on one is not the software like photoshop or affinity photo where uh, it's about precision on one is about getting edits out of a raw image so you can get your uh, your work to your clients or uh, post it to the website that you're going to or whatever it is that you're trying to do with your image all right so i got the mask cleaned up as much as I could get it cleaned up and as you can see I went ahead and just used the basic brush 
the painting around. I could have cleaned up more in the hair here as well, but I cleaned up a good portion of what was going on in the image. Here's what the mask looks like now after I have cleaned it up. Still having those artifacts, but they're not really impacting the image overall, right? You can see that there's these artifacts, but it's not impacting the image in a negative way. I'm still getting that black and white. So if I go ahead and zoom all the way out, you can see that this now has the effect that I was kind of going for with the individual subject popping out of the image and I have a pretty good selection but for what on one can do to really get the edits to pop in your image and give you some creative flexibility I think the masking tools do a great job again I still recommend using the quick brush AI mask to make the selections here but I did want to show how you can use the OG masking brush because this is a tool that has been around in on one for a very long time and as i said i think in future releases we may see it disappear just so it simplifies this masking category up here with all the brushes and the options that we have available to us if you have questions leave them in the comment section below i'll do my best as always to answer your questions about the tools but i also like to know are you using the quick mask AI brush or are you using the OG quick mask brush for making selections in your photos? Let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.